When you had a can of soup and you took out the label, it becomes a rectangle. And if we do know a rectangle, this rectangle, even though it's flat, it has some kind of minimum volume. And we're gonna assume they're all the same. We're trying to cut with the same volume of each um, rectangle. So again, did I con convince you that whatever used to be, uh, whatever used to be a cylinder, any cylinder, if you cut it, but make sure you convince on this. You have a cylinder, you cut it, and you unfold it, it becomes a rectangle. Convince, right? Like I hope that's a like, very visual idea. So let's find the volume of this object, and then we're gonna have integral summing all those volumes. That's a very classical idea. What is the area first of this 2D object? And then we're gonna multiply by dx or dy of the um, this width. So it's width over here. We just assume it's dx or dy, convenient. But what is the area? Height times width, right? That's the area. Height times width. So let's, um, do they give us some numbers? Oh, they did. Let's do it this way. I do know that the height is the height of the original object. So we're going to call it, let's see, uh, let's agree 2 by r. That's fine. Let's just agree it's h. Doesn't really matter in the formula later, it will just be height. So this is what they call it, height of the object. But then what is the width? So let me write it down here. This is height. What, not the width, what is this thing? Well, it is width for the rectangle. How to find it? Circumference, very smart. Let's see if you all agree, check it out. This is a rectangle we're looking at. I know the height h. I don't know how long this side is, but I remember that it used to be folded. If I'm folding it, this is what I'm looking at. It's a circumference of a circle. Showing, 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 illustration. So if I know the circumference, I know how wide the rectangle is. Pretty cool idea. If it comes from a circular motion, then one of the sides will be 2 pi r. I just spoiled it. What is the circumference of the circle? I wanted to ask him. Do you remember the formula of the circumference? Amazing. <laughs> yes, 2 pi r, exactly. Circumference. So 2 pi times the radius. That is exactly how we're creating it. Circumference C has a formula, 2 pi r. 2 pi, let's call it small capital R. doesn't matter to me. 2 pi r. Nice. So we have A, which is area of this rectangle, height times 2 pi r times the width, which is dx or dy, depending on situation. Good, let's write down two formulas. V equals, so we have limits, infinitely many slices, infinitely many of those rectangles created from the unfoldingness and blah, blah, blah. That gives us definition of the integral. From A to B, you have 2 pi r, times h dx so we're literally collecting those labels together this is this wow that's fat this is a circumference 2 pi r is circumference h is the height of the object height or height of the rectangle and then dx is its width, but since we're working with rectangle, rectangle also has width. Let's call it depth. Depth. Depth of each rectangle from A to B. Or you can guess the other one will be dy case. From C to D, 2 pi r h dy. The difference is, be very careful. I'll put it in the box right now and then explain something extremely important. So stay on top of this for a second. Here's the box. I need this volume using shell methods. Shells. So check this out. Very interesting situation going on here. The first integral is in terms of x. It's from A to B. We know that. What is the function and what is the constant? 2 pi is a constant, we know that, uh, not, do not care. R and H, 
Are any of these fixed or all of these are functions? Comes from the 3D understanding. Let's discuss R first. Is radius the same for everything? Radius comes from the circumference. Is this radius the same as the radius of the inside unfolding? No. Outside radius is the biggest one, then the smaller it gets, the smaller the radius, right? So the first rectangle will have very huge circumference, and that is R, that is radius. Next one will have smaller, then smaller, then smaller, until we get into the core. That is the idea. So radius depends on X. Okay, now we know. Radius depends on X. Good. How about the height? Let's check that. Be very careful. Height is this object over here. This is my height. Does height change? Not for the soup of can. Soup, can of soup. Soup of can. But what if the object actually has some beautiful shapes? What if the 3D object is actually like that? Then, just because can of soup is the cylinder, that's why height is fixed. But even the very typical idea of the onion I just told you. Here's the onion. The outside layer has height like so, the inside layer height like so, the inside layer height like so, smaller, smaller, and when you get to the heart or core, the height changes. Boom, then the height is different every time. And now H also depends on X. So now we have two functions inside, R and H. C, D, D, Y. And we will have to learn how to find those, which makes it ideologically more complicated, but students somehow like it more because the formula is easier. And usually you don't deal with pi r squared. When you deal with pi r squared, you have to deal with squares. This one has no squares, so it's usually easier. Note, note. Unlike in the previous scenario, so let's see, if, okay, we have two notes actually, let's do this one. Note one, use this method or shell method when independent variable, independent var is variable, variable is different different from from the axis of rotation the axis of rotation rotation let me know if you don't like my handwriting i can try to be better use this method when the independent variable variable is var is different from the axis of rotation for example for example, so there will be two notes. For example, you are given functions y equals f of x. So independent variable is my input. x is independent variable, but you rotate about y axis. So this is a scenario shell method works really well when you rotate on the opposite axis of rotation from the independent variable. That's note one. Note two is, unlike in the previous case, uh, when you rotate about x-axis, we're gonna use dy case. When rotate about x-axis or parallel to x-axis, I will skip that, that kinda should be common sense. X-axis or anything looks like x-axis, then this is case two, dy case. So it completely flips the order. And when rotate about y-axis, then this is case one, dx case. Like so. Note number two. Those two notes are connected, and that's the last thing I want to tell today, that this this method works well when you don't want to solve for y. Maybe it's even impossible to solve for y. Then you use shell method so you don't have to solve for y. Or when it's impossible to solve for x, you use shell method so you don't have to solve for x. You can reverse 
the usage of axis of rotation. For you to understand, both methods should give you the same answer. So at some point you have freedom which one to use. Or some, usually one method is obviously easier than another one. On the quiz next week, which covers these topics. I will give you problems which can be done two ways, and you can compare that they give you the same answer. Not too bad? <laughs>